Here's a diorama of the Paleozoic seas and oceans. Uh, this is showing the here the long tentacled cephalopods, not lloyd cephalopods. Note how long the tentacles are in relationship to the shell. And over here are the is another species that has much shorter tentacles. Cephalopods are one of the um, well understood species where you can see their evolutionary history of going from straight shell to being totally coiled. The, we're talking about the rise of entirely new species. There's an incredible variety of what their shells underwent and the numerous species that branched off from these in much later periods. This is just the Ordovician. Here's an illustration of a nauloid cephalopod eating a primitive Ordovician fish. These fish are not like today's fish. They are like armored tadpoles. They do not have the stabilizing fins and they are jawless. First fish on earth were jawless for many millions of years. There's another really Ordovician age fish, but however they've never been found in the Cincinnati and not in the uh, tri-state area anyway. They find it in the fossils elsewhere in other parts of the world. They had not yet migrated here. Their population was very small. They were, fish were a rarity in those oceans and seas. This shows a few of the images of several pods. We have several pods with slightly coiled shells. Now, if you uh, look at the next, look up at how many parts of the videos I've made, I will have multiple parts eventually of uh, actual specimens to show you on later videos. Again, just look up if I have parts one, two, three, and uh, th there will be additional videos added on with newer, as newer specimens are brought in that I discover and also people in the dry dredgers, the fossil club that I belong to. This is a photograph of a diorama from a museum, natural history museum, of what a cephalopod looked like whole. And here are my mounted cephalopod fragments. The most common way of finding them are just in a few inches of fragmented shell. And we find these very commonly here in Cincinnati fossils uh, as broken bits and pieces of their shell. And the key characteristic that you see is that they are cylindrical and that they are tapering to a skinnier edge. If they're a whole course, it tapers to a point, but that's not usually what you see. So it's more of a cylinder, and you see all the septal and the cameral uh, divisions. It looks like discs stack one into another. Matter of fact, in this display on this side here, what looks kind of like a bird bath is actually the round, this round oval. In real life, it would have been it would have been uh, circular. However, sometimes these shells, they get compressed. Um, anyway, so th this is uh, compressed this way. That's why it's oval instead of round. Um, the point being is this is one big disc. Uh, these, these things can become, these segments can become broken off from one another and this is just one large one. Here the uh, entire shell is found as an internal mold. There's nothing but the infilling and it is rather blank. It is rather featureless. However, usually some of them are beautifully um, you have the internal structures definitely represented. So most of these are about maybe two inches, three inches, four inches. That's commonly the way you find them in the Cincinnati. On a few of them you can find that internal pipe-like structure uh, it is rather, some of them are bead shape, bead like, going running right down the middle. This is the siphuncle. You can see on this one it is somewhat rounded. Here's one here and it is definitely bead like. Sometimes you'll find these siphuncles totally on their own. 
and it will really stump beginner fossil hunters what the heck that thing is because when you find these uh, fragmented and broken bits and pieces of the different animals it's a real jigsaw puzzle what some of these creatures were here's another one okay here's a fragment of a cephalopod shell and note that when you look at it from the side it is indeed com this one is compressed like the letter D and the reason for that is when it was laying on the seafloor the sediments above it uh, compressed it compacted it it distorted the shape of it and now it has this uh, instead of being nice and round like say this one it is very distorted like that one uh, many of these are compressed like the letter D they're flat on one side round on another just like this and that's the reason why this would have been the flat the D part the stem of the D so to speak the bottom of the shell was compressed and flat from the seafloor the sediments were pushing down on it this happened prior to it being fossilized okay on my mounted mounted fragments of cephalopods I have them going from the uh, the living chambers all the way up to the tiny ends okay so these very smooth um, end pieces they are the living chamber that is this is where the head the tentacles the stomach the guts of the uh, squid like cephalopod were living in this end chamber and you can see how it is featureless cylindrical but featureless and just starting to show the hints of the uh, of the septal divisions behind it. Look at the siphuncle on this one. Here it is as a positive, and strangely enough, look at this one. Here the septal uh, indentations, so to speak, are found in the septum itself. It's a little bit, a little bit out of sequence. A little bit, in other words, zigzag. I don't know why. But uh, you can see some of the remnants of the siphuncle down the center. Anyway, so children in and around Cincinnati love to go out and fossil hunt. This is one of the best places in the world for finding Ordovician Age fossils. And the kids will find many of these. Typically, you can find uh, oh, half a dozen. Every time you go fossil hunting, you find at least six or so in most places. Um, now we're getting into some really tiny ones. One of the cool things about cephalopods is their internal, their shells uh, will obviously be uh, infilled with a featureless gray or tannish colored matrix rock. This is the internal mold. However, in some instances, instead of being filled in with this featureless uh, limestone material, it can be filled in with uh, calcite crystals, which is just beautiful. So check out, and that's true of many of our fossils here in Cincinnati, whether it be crinoids or trilobites, calcite will fill in those hollows, and they're just uh, really neat to find. The kids get excited. Not everybody does, really. Especially the little kids, they get excited to find crystals. And I'm showing you a really neat one that has uh, some of the hollow chambers present, and it's been infilled with calcite crystals as well as this other mineral and I have forgotten what that's called. I'm not a mineral person. I think it's barite. One of, the, one of you mineral experts can write in and I'll put it in the comments. I want to tell you a little story about this one. Um, me and the kids, we would go, we would be stuck in the doctor's office and right outside the doctor's office we would run out to the cliffs, which is just a half a block away from the doctor's office and uh, me and the kids would go fossil hunting. Found this. I found uh, actually this one first because it was broken open, pretty much just like what you see here. This rock was broken apart from this one. They match. They will go back together, and you can see that this rock will fit into this one perfectly. And this one was sticking out and was obvious, and I found that um, readily. But then I had to wait a few more years go by, and I didn't notice it till I went to the side and found the edge of this I didn't see it because it wasn't laying flat out obvious and I found the uh, the matching part to it so that